Hey, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy E2 Blue coming back at you again. And um, it's Saturday, tomorrow's game day. Matchup between the Dallas Cowboys and the Seattle Seahawks. So today, the Dallas Cowboys are traveling to Seattle to uh, head off, square off with these guys tomorrow. Now, in my breakdown last you know, last last week's game with the Giants, I was you know talking about the keys of the game. Now, same thing this week. Dallas Cowboys have to come out strong. If they don't come out strong, you're going to give Russell Wilson time because Russell Wilson is a game changer. He is a quarterback that has the ability to carry the team on his back. And that's what he has to do this year right now until the Seattle Seahawks do what they can do. Because right now, they're in a, whether they realize it or not, the Seattle Seahawks are in a rebuilding mode. A lot of their Legion of Boom is gone. Um, Earl Thomas don't want to be there no more. Um, I mean, they still have a couple of pieces. They still have um, Bobby Wagner and a few other guys on that defense. Uh, um, they can do do some things. But um, one thing that we cannot do is come in this game and underestimate them. No way in any fashion. And Cowboys have no nerve at all right now to go in the game being cocky and thinking that they got it because – Statistically, the Cowboys are below the barrel right now. Below the barrel. Not even in the barrel. They're below the barrel. Um, I think the only thing category that we're really good in right now is um, <laughs> uh, defense rushing and sacks right now. I think we're second in the league in sacks, and I think we're like fourth in overall defense <coughs> so far after, you know, two games. So, um Again, can't come in this game underestimating the Seattle Seahawks. You got to give them their due diligence. One thing that uh, uh, that the Cowboys have to do in this game is contain Russell Wilson. You have to contain him. If you watch last week's game, um, uh, their game last week, um, the defensive linemen were able to come off the edges and basically collapse the pocket from the edges. Russell Wilson has a has a knack for coming straight up that middle he likes that middle now you give him any type of running lanes it's just like with cam newton you give them those lanes he is going to kill you now one thing about a defense breaking down when you can have hats on hats on hats on your guy but if russell wilson slips out just for a second and he has the ability to extend the play oh you're gonna be in trouble because if you don't follow your keys you don't stay in your lanes and do what you're supposed to do and stay disciplined oh he's going to kill you and he's going to pass it to a receiver even though he doesn't have doug baldwin right now he's got some uh capable receivers out there that can catch the ball um again that's that russell wilson magic he, he definitely can do it but again the key thing right now is our defense um staying disciplined and doing what they've been doing sacking i think that um, we're going to get a lot of sacks this game. We're going to get a lot of pressures. We're going to get a lot of hurries. But with that being said, you still can't get cocky. You have to play your game. Have to play your game. Um, like I was saying with the offense with Dak Prescott, you got to come in the game strong. If Jason Garrett goes with uh, keeping the ball at, at the beginning after the toss, if we win that toss and he doesn't defer to the defense, uh, we'll, um, we'll to their offense, and we have the ball first. Dak Prescott's got to come in on that first drive and come in strong. You got to utilize your talents. Tavon Austin needs to have that ball. And you have to run your game plan. You got Zeke. You got Tavon. I've said this before. You got to use these guys. Um, I think that they should incorporate a little bit with um, the fullback, too, because our, our fullback is not only a good blocker, but this dude is good in short yardage situation, and he, he definitely has the skills to even be a runner if we need to. Now, with those RPOs, that is Dak's thing. I don't think that there's many teams in this league right now that can stop the RPO with, if the Dallas Cowboys use it effectively. And when I say effectively, I mean utilize the different talents that you have on offense. We've been I, – I, I don't know how many times that – We've been screaming how much we need needed speed receivers and speed rushers and just speed offensive guys, period, on this team. You got a couple of them now. And I feel like with this team having seven receivers, I know they're trying to find the core guys right now and everything is a little jumbled right now. And I believe that as the season goes along, things are going to get better. 
and as things get better, they'll be able to cut guys here and they know exactly who is going to be in what place, um, you know, with um, as far as their core of receivers. Now, a lot of people look at our receivers and be like, they're all the same. They are, but they aren't. Each one of them has a certain thing that they do, which is very good. I think that just we have to do a better job at putting certain packages with certain guys and just figuring out who's going to do what. And once they figure that out, I think we'll be good. I don't know what's going to happen with Terrence Williams right now as far as his suspension. I don't know if that means he's going to, he's going to get cut ultimately. Um, again, that'll put us back down to six. Um, I don't know what they're going to do with Terrence. Uh, I, I, I personally like Terrence. I, because he has a good rapport with Dak, they just don't use him enough. And I guess I feel like if you're not going to use a player, then why waste a roster spot on him? Because we definitely need safety help, and we definitely can use that for another position skill on this team. Now, uh, <clears throat> just a couple of fun facts. So, the Cowboys haven't started a season one and two since 2010, which was Garrett's first season as head coach. That's interesting. <clears throat> now, I already knew that, but I know some some people don't really know that. Now, that's not giving Garrett any praise or anything at all. Don't don't get me wrong. I'm not. I'm not at all. But um, I will say that um, <laughs> this franchise hasn't been terrible. We It's been disappointing. We've had a lot of times where we were right there at the cusp, right there at the playoffs or in the playoffs and in a position to get to a point where we can actually make it to an NFC championship game, which we haven't been in a while. Now, that is what we're looking at right now. I'm not thinking about Super Bowl because I want to get to the playoffs, get to the NFC championship, then the Super Bowl. See, this is the thing that a lot of people, um, they just hope and wish and pray, which is fine. But let's be realistic. You got to take it one step at a time. You can't jump from zero to a hundred. You just can't do that. It's like being born and trying to walk, and then run and then sprint. So you, it's it 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 it's a process. Everything is a process in life, and you just got to deal with it accordingly. Um, <laughs> the Seattle Seahawks haven't started a season zero and three since two thousand two, which ironically. Uh, Russell Wilson was 14 years old at that time. Hmm, that's funny. How old was I in 2002? 2002, I was in, I was in high school in 2002, but uh, I was 17. So, I, like I said, I'm I'm a little older than Russell Wilson is, but um, it is what it is. But when you when you go back and look at times, you're like, what were you doing at this year and this time? Like, I I just think that it's always funny when you look back, like. People that graduated high school were <laughs> born in 2000, 2001. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy to think that. But um, <clears throat> anyway, not to get off topic, but Seattle is 14 and 1 in the last 15 years um, in winning season openers. So if we're following history, the Seattle Seahawks will win this game because they are 14 and 1 in season openers in the last 15 years but wait no wait wait a minute wait a minute now there's always evidence to refute that because also the dallas cowboys are 14 and 1 in the last 15 years of winning game three and this week is game three so this week it's going to be interesting because whoever wins this game and or loses this game will break that 14 and one because it's, it's really ironic. Now it's a pointless stat and I know that it's a really pointless stat, but it's funny to think about both teams are 14 and one. The Seahawks are 14 and one in um, season openers. The Cowboys are 14 and one and winning game three so somebody gonna have to lose this game and somebody's gonna have to win it so that's gonna get broken this week now i definitely want my cowboys to win i'm always gonna be biased about that because i want my cowboys to win but if the cowboys go in this game 
um, underestimating these Seattle Seahawks, which you cannot do, because they got some good linebackers. Those those twin brothers, uh, Shaquille Shaquem, I think Shaquem, yeah. Um, those those are gonna they're gonna be some they're gonna be some really good linebackers um, going forward. Um, that was a great pickup by. Uh, I actually had the Cowboys getting one of those at least one of those twins in the third round, um, but you know. Look at it like this. It's going to be hard enough playing in this stadium. Everybody knows the history of, well, we can't say the 12th man, but the 12th, I'll say. It is loud at CenturyLink Field. And if you've ever been there before, you know you could be sitting right next to somebody and they can't hear you. It's almost like a college atmosphere where you go there and everybody's standing up the entire damn game. Now, I don't get to witness that much because, again, I went to HBCU, so I went to a smaller college, so um, I didn't have that, that big game feel of the Big Ten or the ACC or, or, or uh, the SEC or anything like that. I never got to experience that in school um, because I was a part of a school that was a part of CIAA. Now, granted, my college was really good athletically. Our football team wins damn near every year, but nobody cares about us because we're D2, but it is what it is. Um, <clears throat> I think uh, we had one person from the NFL come out in this generation. I think it was uh, a guy that graduated with me, Isaac Redman. I know well, you guys remember Isaac Redman when he played for uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. He actually graduated college with me. We were actually, um, <laughs> I actually spoke to him at graduation. Um, it was interesting how he got recruited. Um, basically, people just put his tape together, um, just highlights of him and just posted it online. And um, I think the Ravens and then the Steelers scouts, I guess, saw that on YouTube. And they uh, requested to, you know, give him a workout. And that's how he got with Pittsburgh, but that's besides the point. Um, blocking out that sound in Seattle is going to be huge. The reason being is because <sighs> Joe Looney is the starting center right now. Travis Frederick is not there right now. Travis Frederick has played at this place and started this place, so he knows how to block that out. Now, hearing the line calls it ain't going to happen. Now, the disadvantage for the offense right now, because of these line calls and, and because of the snap counts, the receivers and the all other offensive line, everybody that's on the offense is going to have to glance out the side of their eye down the line for when the ball gets snapped. They're just going to have to literally see that. Now, the disadvantage of that is you're going to lose – about a half a second to a second, depending on how slow or fast that, that offensive player is, um, because you have to watch the line before you snap. You have to kind of anticipate it, not actually know when the exact snap count is, if you understand what I'm saying, which in turn will give the defense the advantage in this situation. The Seattle Seahawks defense is going to be going to have the advantage in this game because of the, the the how loud it is there. We're not going to be able to hear our snap count. So that half a second or a second makes a lot of difference because first of all, the offensive linemen not only have to glance down the aisle, but they also have to back up. So when the defense is coming at them, defense is coming forward. Anytime you're coming forward to somebody that's stepping back, you're always going to have the advantage anyway. But in this situation with the line calls not being heard, it's going to be a guessing game. And I just hope that we don't have a lot of false starts. I just, I just hope that we can stay disciplined. And like I said, the Cowboys, they've been listening to loud music all this week during practice to try to, um, I guess, try to get them to um, get used to that. But there's nothing that's going to uh, – there's nothing close to that sound in that stadium that you could prepare for. You you kind of actually already have to um, experience it. Now, Dak Prescott has been there before during preseason, so uh, his rookie year. So they, they've, they've seen the Seattle. They've been up there before. But now that he's going to play a whole game 
and this game counts. This is important, and this gonna is gonna prove Dak, um, and whether he has it or not. One thing that Dak Prescott has to do is he has to get back to what he did his rookie year, that poise. That was the word that was used for Dak Prescott that season when he came into the league, when everybody talked about his success. They said he's a poised guy. He doesn't seem like he's nervous. He doesn't seem like he's never been there before. It just seems like it came natural. For some reason this year, it's almost like, not like he's playing scared, but it's more of like he's a little cautious. <clears throat> I know that he doesn't want to, oh yeah, y'all see my Cowboys watch? I see the Cowboys watch. Yeah. Anyway, um, the the thing the thing about it is he definitely has to make sure that he stays focused. And I know that he doesn't want to throw interceptions, but sometimes you got to take a chance. You got to throw that ball downfield. You got to loosen up that defense because they are going to try to stop the run regardless. And that's what every team is going to try to come in here doing. Now, granted, every defense that we're going to play doesn't have – the cojones or the personnel, I should say, to um, get at your uh, your running back. Now we already know that week three. This is this is Zeke's week right here. This is where Zeke's gonna come out and he's gonna uh, ball because history tells you that the last two seasons that he was in the league, he started off slow in the in a couple of uh, in the, in the first couple of games of the season, and then after the third week, it was on and pop, and he was back to his hundred yards a game. 100 plus yards a game. So um, I think Zeke will be fine. Um, I just, we just, again, on offense, we have to come out strong again and we have to bust them in the mouth early because you got to get, you got to get a lead on them because the thing is you get a lead on these Seahawks, they're going to make mistakes. They're going to throw interceptions. They're going to be careless with the ball because they're going to try to catch up. This is a desperation for them because, and they're going to be ready to go. And, Cowboys got to be ready for what they're about to head into. They're heading into a century link field that's going to be loud as hell. It's their season opener. It's their home opener. Not season opener. It's their home opener. So the fans are going to be hyped to be there to see a home game. And you best believe the only way you're going to quiet that crowd down is you bust them in the mouth early. You come in there, you do like you did with the Giants, you score a long touchdown, you get Zeke to run for 50, 60 yards, and you just keep it pushing. One thing that we cannot do, and I don't and I don't know how many times that I have to keep stressing this, they have to keep their foot on the gas. Whenever you're up, whenever you're doing something that's, that, that works, keep doing it. Keep doing it, because if you don't keep doing it, they have a tendency to go back into that conservative crap that they do that doesn't work it doesn't work you know what works do it do it do what works and that that's pretty much all i can tell you um our defense key right now xavier woods is coming back he's going to be in the starting lineup um kayvon's gonna um rotate with him um which is good because you're not going to burn these safeties out. They're going to be fresh on, on certain downs and certain packages that they pull. Chris Richard has been helping Marinelli a lot with these plays. And Chris Richard is going to be key in this game. He's going to be key in this game because he was the coordinator for the Seattle Seahawks. He knows Russell Wilson. He knows his strengths. He knows his weaknesses. And he knows how their offense wants to play. <clears throat> And he knows pretty much what their defense does. Even though a lot of their staff over there is new, they're still going to implement some of the same things. It's not like that they changed a whole lot. So, but again, the majority of the personnel that Chris Richard was there with is still there. And he knows how to play against these guys. And that's going to be key for us. Calling those right plays on defense, dialing up those blitzes when, when you need to, players staying in their lane. And, um, I love the safety blitzes. Oh, I love that. Like, I love this, when Kayvon got his. And I think that Kayvon might get another one, him or Xavier Woods. And I think that I I, I I'm I got a gut feeling that Jeff Heath is going to get an interception this game. I think it's I think it's about time. I think it's I think it's time for Jeff Heath to get that 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 INT. Maybe a pick 6, who knows. But again, we got to come out aggressive. Um if 
Rico is in fact active this game. We need to use him in the red zone. Uh, Disley, Disley, their tight end, the Seahawks tight end. I think his name is Disley. That guy right there is a young dude. But at first, I thought it was Jimmy Graham because he had the uh, eighty-eight on. But my whole thing is this: get him out there, like how they have Disley, because Disley used to be a defensive lineman, I believe, when he was in college. He ain't never played tight end. He just started playing tight end this offseason. You understand that? So with Dak, I mean, with um, Rico Gathers here, with his 6'8 frame, um, he's still a little bigger than Disley is. Use him. You see how they're using Disley, Cowboys? Garrett, Linehan, get Rico out there on some packages. Put him in the red zone. Back shoulder fade. Throw it in the corner. Fade. Whatever you got to do, get Rico the damn ball. Because I'm telling you, them corners ain't going to be able to contest that. You saw that he almost caught that other one, even though um, Dak missed him. Give it to him again. Go back to that. You saw that it almost worked. And the only reason why it didn't is because Dak was pressured like hell. He had like three, three defensive linemen on his butt right there. But at the end of the day, he needs to give Rico the ball. Because um, that red th zone threat is another weapon. We have the personnel. Use it. Oh, my God. Use it. <laughs> it's too many players on this offense. It's too many fast players. It's too many capable bodies to not be successful. Hey, we should be 3-0. and Not 1-1 not one and, one and potentially 2-1. and one. Not that. We, we, should, we should have won that Carolina game. There's no way. But, you know, the pass is the pass. <clears throat> um, third down percentage freaking terrible Seattle Seahawks are 28% on third down the Cowboys are a dismal 23% on third down now <laughs> I know that it's like I said just week three um, stat liners really kind of don't matter right now but this is the time of the season between now and these next couple of weeks is you're going into the meat of the season after next week. And it's important for you to get a lead and to have a winning record. Because I think after this week, we'll start to have a little easier route. Because I think we got the Lions next week. And yeah, so you, you got to stay focused and you got to win the game. That's, 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 that's big. And if Dak gets this win here at Century Link Field, I can see the, I can I can see the reports. Oh well, they beat a they beat a, a restructuring Seattle Seahawks team, like almost like to make it seem like it won't matter. But no, it's gonna matter. Trust me. Um, what I was saying about the defensive linemen and them trapping them, we have. Randy Gregory, we have D-Law, we have Dayton Jones, because I think he's coming back to play this game, because I think Malik Collins sprained his knee, so he's going to sit, but you have Tyrone Crawford, you got these guys, and Taco, you got these guys that can trap and contain, contain Russell Wilson, and you will win the game, That that is key on defense, you got to keep him contained, you can't let him get outside that pocket, and you definitely can't get him on the move like how you let Cam Newton go. That's one thing that you cannot do. Um, statistically, in offense right now, Cowboys are a dismal 30th in, in, in overall offense. The Seahawks are 27th. Defense, which is the only positive right now. The defense, the Cowboys are 4th in the league right now, and the Seahawks are 19th. In passing, the Cowboys are yet again 30th. And the Seattle Seahawks are 23rd. In rushing, the Cowboys are 13th. And that's even with Zeke not doing great. Um, and the Seahawks are 29th. Now, again, I know it's still early in the season. We got a lot to get through. Um, but that's where we're at right now statistically. And we got to do better. And, again, once Dak finds his certain receivers or once he finds who his security blanket is and once um, – this offense get into the groove where we figure out what receivers are going to do what, what tight ends are going to do what, 
that way every week we're not trying to figure this thing out like we don't know what's going on so uh the seattle seahawks like i said before they are not a team that you can go in here and underestimate they still have russell wilson i look at it like this if you contain him he's not going to be able to do the things that he normally does he doesn't have many weapons right now because again they're in restructuring mode Pete Carroll gonna tell you that they're not but they definitely are um, which is the reason why I don't understand why they didn't just trade Earl Thomas to begin with because you know that it's not really doing anything for you right now um, yeah Earl Thomas had that interception and I think he has like 10 tackles already but he may not even play in this game and if he does play in this game who knows if he's even gonna play hard who knows because he doesn't want to be there and he doesn't want to hurt anybody on the Dallas Cowboys. So I think that he's going to try to stay out of this game because of that. Not saying that it's because of the Cowboys, but it, it, whatever reason that he, he, he's not going to play is what, whatever. But it's just it, this, is, this is a weird week because of all the stuff that we went down in the offseason between the Seattle Seahawks and the Earl Thomas thing. We've been talking about this ever since – last season when Earl Thomas came into the locker room with um, trying to talk to Jason Garrett. So I just look at it like this. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at a lot of things this game, and our defense definitely um, is going to show and prove. We just got to – Dak Prescott just got to get his offense together. And once he gets that offense together um, and we have some sort of balance, that way – because you don't want to put your defense in a situation where they're on the field 24-7. Because I don't care how good a defense is, when they, if they're on the field 90% of the time, they're going to lose because they're going to get tired. And no matter how much you're rotating, you got to get these guys some rest. So um, we got to run the ball. Run the ball. Run it down their throat. Keys to victory right there. Defense, containing Russell. Well, I would say Chris Richard. Container Russell Wilson, Dak Prescott coming out strong like he did with the Giants and basically um, making making their defense hell and doing things that they've never seen before, utilizing Tavon, utilizing Deontay Thompson, utilizing Rico Gathers, utilizing some of your other running backs like Rod Smith. Um, do that. Do that. Those are keys to winning. And, uh, oh, yeah, and if you guys are wondering why I'm wearing um, dressed up, I went to a career fair at uh, the University of Maryland. Uh, it was sports and entertainment. So they had different um, sports organizations out there. And, uh, <laughs> the, of course, the Redskins were one of them because we're in the Redskin market right now. Um, well, oh, yeah, if you guys didn't know, my career, my degree is in broadcast communication. So, um that radio, television, sports bro uh, broadcasting in general is is my field. But um, obviously, I'm not working in it right now. But um, trying to get it. So that's why this YouTube channel is big for me right now because um, just being able to talk to you guys, I'm tickling a fancy that I wasn't able to do before. So um, thank God for that. So hey, guys, like, share, comment. Um, Get ready for game day tomorrow, 425, if you're on the West Coast, 125. Um, I probably will be at Mark's house tomorrow, um, probably live streaming with him, acting the fool like we did last week. That's just what we do. Y'all know E2 Blue keep it real all the time. Yo, like, share, comment. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and um, uh, subscribe to the channel. You won't be disappointed. I'm going to keep you in tune. Um, and just doing me, y'all. It's your boy E2Blue. Always keeping it real. I'll talk to y'all soon. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Talk to y'all tomorrow.